and welcome back to the CSC Talk podcast. On my right or left, depending on how we edit this, Enoch has joined me, uh, who's a very talented writer, just uh, writes for the Chelsea Social, the Chelsea Spot. I hope that I don't get this wrong. And he's our lead writer as well. So welcome him on the podcast and, and, a, and a regular guest. Um, sadly, tonight, Alex and Amar both are busy, so they can join us, but they'll hopefully be there for the uh, Champions League final uh, review, review, depending on when they're free. So hopefully we should have him back. Enoch, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Top four confirmed. Feeling? Yeah, I'm just happy, quite satisfied that we got top four. The way we got it wasn't necessarily the best, but I think in the end, the fact that we got it when Tuchel, he came on, we were eighth in the table. The fact that we got top four, it's I'm pretty satisfied with it. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. I think what the... Um, I guess, yeah, I guess, as you said, you know, the last game, it wasn't the best of games. We could have won. Uh, but at the end of the day, Spurs would like to thank you publicly. I'd like to publicly thank Spurs for helping us out. <laughs> I mean, okay, the, 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 the first thing that came to my mind was we ended their titles back in 2016 by defeating them, mm-hmm. and now they've helped us in four. So. Yep. <laughs> I guess, yeah, uh, that's one. And again, the final coming up. Uh, but re- realistically, there wasn't any use for Tuchel to lose this game, was it? You know, especially after we the way we lost uh, the FA Cup and then we, we really managed to scrape into top four where it could have been there comfortably if we would have won the Arsenal game where he was rotating the squad or this game um, where we're not even sure what the players were doing. At that point, I think we had like six or seven stri- six or seven attackers on uh, when when uh, mm-hmm. we took off Jorginho and then the other players. Go ahead, Chich, yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, um, your your thoughts on the game, your overall review. I think um, the final game of the league, it was it kind of encapsulated what this whole season was about. It showed how we dominated on the ball, we kept possession, we created loads of chances. But then yet again, we lacked that cutting edge, that final finish. And it just showed against a Aston Villa side that really, they had nothing to lose in this match. They weren't getting Europe. They just came to enjoy. And they came and they grabbed two goals. Fair play to them. One of our own academy products, uh, Bertrand Traore, he, he scored a... It was, it was a pretty good goal. Yeah, it was kind it was of a, a miss hit actually on his part, but fair play to him. He scored a good goal and then Jorginho gave away a soft penalty and um, yeah, that was, that was a... It, I, you I can't put the was, blame on Kepa. That would you say that? So. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, would you say that was a penalty? Because I didn't think it was. I mean, it was such a light touch and, and honestly, on the day, think... Aston Villa mm-hmm. were such crybabies and then Jack Grealish, I want to get to him at the end of it when <laughs> the red card happened for Aston yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really think I would argue about the penalty. I've seen worse decisions before going against us. I, I'm, I just think that it was, it just showed that we really were incompetent. It was just a sign. Like, uh, so yeah, but otherwise, um, this whole game, I think our, we once again showed how weak our midfield is without Kante. And how re- really we missed him in games in games like this. Like, Georgino and Kovacic really weren't able to put in that defensive shift to cover their uh, the back three, which Kante really can put in even when he's high up the pitch in this new role that he's playing in as a box-to-box. He really can show that when, no matter where he is on the pitch, which is everywhere, he can put in that defensive shift, which, that, which our defense really needs, no matter how good our defenders are. So... Yeah, we really saw that we missed Kante. Um, another point that I would say is Reese James, no matter how good he is, he's not meant to be a centre back. Yes, he did well with Jamie Vardy. It was he sh- it, it, I think it should have been more of a one off. He shouldn't be consistently playing there. We saw as he he was decent as a right wing back, but he I think Reese James would have been much, much better as a right wing back in this game. And as we could have been a centre back in this game, so a few a few inconsistencies with Tuchel's um, lineup, but I think we just have to be satisfied that we somehow, thanks to 
our boys Hurricane, Gareth Bale, we scraped top four. So yeah, I just have to be grateful. <laughs> maybe this. maybe after uh, three months from now, maybe three months from now, we'll be the ones saying our 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 striker Harry Kane. And we could be saying that. Hey, <laughs> hey, let's hope so. Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but going back to the point you made about Kante, for those of you who play FIFA and, and kind of know a role of a CM, CAM and a CDM, Kante is basically a CDAM and, he, and he's just everywhere in the midfield. You know, it, as, CD, as Tuchel LM, said it. Just, just put in everything, put in all the positions. <laughs> LM, right now he plays yeah. as a striker as well for Chelsea because we barely have any strikers. You see him up yeah, top, exactly. bro. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, we, we really did miss him. I think it was on the reports today that he might be back in training on Tuesday or Wednesday, so he should be fit for for that Man City game. I feel like even if he isn't, just put him on, please. Just just put him on. Yeah, we saw, I think, back in 2016, wasn't it? We were in the, uh, uh, what was it, in the, in the final of the Europa League when we kind of risked him and played him against Arsenal. And he had such an incredible performance. And I think mm-hmm. his injury took four or five months to heal. But we kind of took that risk because we knew, okay, if he doesn't play, our midfield's gone. And I think this is going to be one of those situations, um, sadly. But we we've need him. I think it, without Kante in the team, it's, it's, it's almost impossible. Um, one kind of thing I wanted to touch on, and as you said about Reese James and Aspel, I feel like he, he needs to stop experimenting at this point. If you're experimenting, you should be experimenting a three at the back or a four at the back. He shouldn't be experimenting between James, who's young, who can run down the wing for 90 minutes, uh, compared to Aspilicueta, who's who's at the end of his career, who wants to be a centre back, I think, I think that's why even he got selected in the Spanish team tonight. He got announced. And that's why where he's going to be used. I don't really see him being the guy who's going to run down the wing and and wait for a ball to come in and cross it in. Um, so that uh, experiment for me is is godly wrong, if if anything. And and he should stop it immediately. And he should realize it. He should kind of go. You know what? Reese James is is good at right wing back. Why are we even out? You test out in positions where there's no, uh, not a proper player to play with. And then that's your striker, your wingers, where you can kind of rotate people to kind of see what's working, what's not. And, and yeah, midfield, the less, the less I say, the better. I think mean, honestly, it's like either they're, they're switched on and they're going to, you know, I, I, if you, if you show a non-football person, a Chelsea game against Real Madrid and you say, look at this and compare with Aston Villa and you'll say, yeah, these are two different players. I think if you, I, I specifically pick out the Madrid game because the first 20 minutes, I think we all kind of can agree uh, that, that those 20 minutes were like probably the best amount of the, the best football we've seen from Chelsea, you know, and, and it was like everything was clicking, even wrong passes felt like, yeah, that was meant to be. Uh, and, and right now, okay. even if they do a right pass, it's like, ah, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? And yeah, at the end of the day, not the best of endings. I think, I think uh, it is what it is, but we, but looking at it overall, I, I think we deserved it. A lot of fans were saying, oh, we don't deserve it because we lost. I think we deserved it. Uh, sacking a manager mid-season, none of our strikers playing off. And then we'll get into the debate with Tammy Abraham in a bit. But realistically, we had a young squad. We had a new squad. We had five, four, four signings, five signings come in. Uh, some of them worked really well. Mendy, Thiago Silva, and some of them are still trying to click in. Um May it be because of COVID or injuries or whatever, but but hopefully next season they'll be able to click in. So your thoughts on that? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that thoughts on the? New I was Chinese just I was city? just asking your general thoughts in in did we deserve the top four or or did we not deserve top four? Oh, we definitely okay, we definitely deserve top four. Like um, you can see we were eighth when Tuchel took charge, and we really won games. We kept the clean sheets. A few bad performances don't define our season. I think people need to realize that. And I know, yes, this is the end of season. There's more scrutiny on the managers. But other, we have to realize other teams also have more to play for or have nothing to play for depending on their situation. So this will affect their performances against us as well. But, um, oh yeah, we definitely deserve top four. And uh, I think especially looking at how our top scorer in the league was Giorgino at, I think, seven goals he scored and all were yeah. penalties. I think if we see that we really lacked goals, it shows how strong we were defensively, how we kept on winning one zeros. We kept those one zeros, those draws. We got, we got this. We just showed that we were solid defensively and that made up for our lack of attacking prowess. We definitely have the attacking prowess. We just don't have the finishing touch, I would say. So, um, we have to really credit Tuchel. He did a great job. 
uh, I think this game versus Man City will put a little more um, a defining edge on what hap- what he's done at the club this season. I think if he if he managed to win it, I think he will go down as one of he'll already go down as an icon in Chelsea's um, managerial books because you know winning the UCL coming in midweights yeah. it's really no small thing. So I think I think he's done a really good job at Chelsea so far. We just have to back him. Uh, it's really sad to see that fans are already turning on a manager. It just shows the mentality of fans at our club and how spoiled we are. Uh, we have to think of fans like Arsenal fans who really don't see Arteta leaving the club anytime soon because their owners are too scringy to pay them off. So we have to realize how privileged we are to even have uh, to even be able to be angry at our manager for losing games. I think that's a very privileged position we are in. I think I'll, I'll say I'll kind of back Tuchel right here, and, and and I know you've been backing him, as, you're, you're backing him as well. I, I will say it, the fans always go after the manager, but they don't realize it's the player. Sometimes the manager can't do anything. He came in six months ago, and and let's be honest, if if any Chelsea fan six months ago was asked the question, "Do you think we'll make top four? Their answer would have been no, because under we lost games where we shouldn't have lost. So if those points were, were to be, if, if you give Tuchel a full chance, this is basically Tuchel trying to, there was a fire, at the, there, you say there was a fire at the bridge and now Tuchel's just kind of calming it down. And and next season, it's his job to re Bamford Bridge at, 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 in a yeah. sense. And I'm not trying to blame Lampard for it. I mean, every manager has their ups and downs. You know, last, last, last I guess Lampard built Stamford Bridge uh, as a player and manager when he got top four with the youngsters and then it just kind of gone downhill. But now he's come in and six months, in six months, he's got us top four. At, at, I know we have lost, but at the end of the day, looking back uh, at January when I was asked if we were going to win anything and I said, no, I don't even think we're going to make top four. I think it was going to be a Europa League se- next season uh, with no trophy this year again. And, and then it kind of turned into, oh, we could win the Champions League after beating Atletico. And then we, it kept on going, kept yeah. on going. Yes, we've scraped through top four. We've scraped through the FA Cup final. And then, you know, we were, we're, were probably not favourites for the Champions League final. But realistically, I would say it's 50-50. I think Tuchel has an upper hand on Man City in the sense of he's beaten them twice. Uh, but Man City sure as hell do know how to, how to break down a team. Um, and and I, at this point, I'm just, I'm just yeah. hoping they party hard. I wish Man City party till Wednesday night, Thursday night. Forget about the final. Yeah, <laughs> come, yeah. come to Porto and, and just lose smoke the final. more cigars. That should be smoking more cigars, bro. I want to see him <laughs> smoking a low, whole pack. Um, I, think, I think going back to what you were saying about... Sorry, sorry. No, no, I was just going to add on until he, he realizes he could switch up something and he changes his, his tactics for the final and somehow he becomes a brilliant team. Yeah, I think at the end of Lampard's spell, it was very hard to kind of let him become manager. And yeah, he, he, does, he does deserve credit for whatever he's done. But at the end of the day, we had to kind of let him go. And it was hard for every Chelsea fan. Uh, I think there was talks about John Terry joining Chelsea somehow, sometime, you know, next. Uh, but I was like, you know what? I can't see another legend at, at, at the club. And then if he doesn't do too well, especially because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disregarding his abilities, but I'm just saying he hasn't got the experience. Uh, that was the case with Lampard. He's an incredible footballer, and he, and I know he'll be an incredible manager. But he just needs experience in the lower leagues. Like, like I think I'll say, uh, uh, Steven Gerrard. He's he's gone to the Scottish. Uh, Premiership instead of coming to the EPL because he knows he needs experience before coming to one of the biggest leagues in the world. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, other than that, Tammy, it's something we can blame Tuchel for. Tammy Abraham. <laughs> something is evidently up. I, I, I'm just hoping that Tammy's done something horribly, horribly wrong to justify why he's out of the squad because otherwise the blame is entirely on Tuchel. Because that's just you just can't do that. You it's 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 what do you call it? It's very inept of him to do that. And um it's quite disappointing actually to see he was our top scorer, I think, in the FA Cup. Then we didn't see him even feature in that squad. Now we are not seeing him feature against Aston Villa. I would understand if he doesn't feature in the Champions we, League final. We but used him as our, Aston Villa. <laughs> we used our cup keeper, but we didn't use our cup striker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas it exactly. should have been the opposite. Um, yeah, so... Yup, yup, yup. So, I'm just 
just hoping that he's done something horribly wrong behind the scenes that we can't see, mm-hmm. which justifies him not being in the squad. If I may intro, I might, I might just say I don't think that's the case. I, I Tammy doesn't seem like the person to kind of go after something. Uh, it, it might be out of frustration, and I and I get it from Tammy's perspective. He doesn't want to be third choice. He doesn't want to be sitting on the bench every week or, or become a cup striker at the age of thirty, uh, not, not thirty four, twenty four. Um, you know, he, he shouldn't be sitting next to Giroud. Uh, he should be on the field, and what. The, the, the worrying part for me is if we don't strike, the, if we don't buy the three strikers that are on the market right now, which we're kind of going for Lukaku, Haaland or Harry Kane and Tammy leaves, we don't have anyone else unless Tuchel kind of transforming her and Kai to score 20 goals a, a season and, and they become incredible because we really need that if Tammy, because out of, out of respect, Tammy will leave. Tammy will leave for his own good sake. He'll say, you know what, I was, I was even if they offer him a new contract. He will leave because he knows, okay, I wasn't respected under Tuchel. If Tuchel says for the next year, I might not get the same respect again. And it, it's going to be very challenging for Tuchel to kind of sign one one of the three of them because Harry Kane doesn't seem like he, he's going to come to Chelsea because of Daniel Levi and, and, and him not selling to Chelsea. Lukaku looks happy at Inter Milan. Uh, Borussia's got, Borussia's got um, Champions League football season so it's his you know why would Haaland want to leave somewhere he's used to um and Tammy's a proven Premier League striker so we kind of had we we've seen how when we get people or players from other leagues it kind of takes time for them to settle in with Harry Kane that I think Harry Kane it becomes the ideal swap for Tammy Abraham but then if that doesn't happen then Tammy Abraham's a proven striker in the Premier League no one can sit here and say you know what he doesn't deserve this he deserves this for every game um if he's if he's our I think second he scored six goals so right behind um, uh, Jorginho, but in way less appearances than any of the others in his in his uh, in the same area. So it's a tricky one. Um, personally, what I would say is Tammy's not a great striker, at least in my books. But at the moment, he's better than any striker who's currently playing for Chelsea because. Um, Jiru is good, but he doesn't have the mobility and the speed, which Tammy is. He is decently fast. And Werner, he's just been struggling in front of goal, which Tammy, he struggles a bit, but not as much as Werner right now. And I think it's to pick the best out of a bad bunch in this situation is what, is what Tuchel should have done. And he really failed at that. So fair play. Um, I can't even argue with Tammy leaving next season. I hope he has the best of careers ahead of him and we have to wish him all the best. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, he need, he will go out of... Yeah, I think that's the end with Tammy and I think he posted a video of him thanking the fans and everything uh, and that kind of gave away that, that he'll be looking to go out. Uh, and, and from a Chelsea perspective, they'll be looking to kind of sell him to a club who can get something in return. Uh, specifically West Ham and 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 Declan Rice. Uh, that's the that's I think that's the top rumor that we're that we're hearing. So that might be happening soon. Um, but they've they've also got a hell of a squad if they keep Jesse Lingard and, and Rice and Tammy Abraham, and they've, they've got Europa League next year. So that will be interesting to see as well. Um, yeah, that, going back to the Aston Villa game really nothing much to talk about right i mean it was just a game on it like i think we were all more focused on focused on what the league table looked like during the live match uh, than the game itself and as soon as uh, gareth bale scored that goal and leicester started losing i think all of us were like you know what yeah whatever the, ga- the game doesn't matter now and then when the second goal went in we were all like yep it's done i think one thing we can take away from the game is that uh we had in i think in the second half like Later on in the second half, we had Ziyech as a, he dropped deep and he was in a pivot with James in the center mid. And that really looked quite interesting. James was doing his job really well and Ziyech was actually not, not, um, not being too shabby either. So I think that was out of a otherwise quite drab game and um, a otherwise quite disappointing game. It was, it was one of the few bright spots. Uh, another thing I think a few other things we should touch on in that game. 
there was one handball that should have been given a penalty but again i will get to that uh, but I can i just make a point more on have your, ourselves on your... to blame oh. sure sure on your uh, comment on the formation and and, and to uh, zia coming on with reese james I would say this kind of shows how important is it it is for us to kind of switch back to a back four next season. As much as I love the back three and it gives us the options, we just don't have the strike power in the middle to go and, and bury every cross that comes in. And we need more attacking players. And and Aston Villa kind of proved it. You know, when we had we, we were at, at a back four playing uh, at this point, I think Thiago Silva was playing a striker as well. But we we need to utilize our squad in a sense where you know we've got Ziek, we've got Pulisic, we've got Havertz, we've got Werner. If all four of them are on the field, we're creating havoc. With Reese James as 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 uh, as the passer, crosser, Mount as the creator, this is this is a team that looks like it could go, it could contend for the Premier League next season. But it's just that Tuchel needs to kind of implement these strategies. And when he's he's come in, he's got a he's had a game every three four days. He really hasn't had that break international break i can't remember was it there was i think there was one for two weeks but again you don't have the players to train with you can't just train with dots and and, and board um so yeah I'll, I'll, i'm very excited to see what he does next season with uh, in terms of that but yeah sorry carry on with the handball uh for me it was a handball and it it, uh, it, it was a clear handball that was again incompetent refereeing you yeah. uh i don't know I think it would be a bit far fetched on my part to say that this was this is in direct relation to us having joined the Super League. Um, I think that's a conspiracy theory that at least I believe in, but it's a bit far fetched. I mean, I understand if people don't um, agree with it, but then again, we are uh, at least us Chelsea fans do have to grab onto any excuse that we can get to make up for us missing all the poor chances that we have. I think Mount missed a few chances. Havertz missed one header that he should have scored. And yeah, I think Chilwell also missed one shot that he could have just binned it in, but he chose to pass it to someone. Yeah. So I think um, we have to agree that that was a penalty. But then again, the fact that he missed chances, that hurt us more than that penalty would have hurt us. Yeah, I agree. I think I keep saying this and I keep repeating this. We can blame VAR all we want, but that's just one incident. What about the other 20 that we miss? You know, and 20 is an exaggeration, but there are so many we miss every game. So we can't just sit here and say, oh, VAR was at fault for this happening. Um, it, it's it's weird. You know, we can sit here and, and um, uh, say that, but at the end of the day, it's it's our own fault for not bringing our chances, but yeah, other than that, I can't think of anything else that was, that was in the game. Um, I think other than that, that was, that was pretty much it. Uh, and then that covers up more. We wanted to talk about tonight. again get for Aston Villa again, guys, this is going to be a short episode because we're going to do a Champions League special. Uh, so it would be a one hour preview. We'd try and get guests on. Maybe we might do it live. We're still planning that. Uh, Enoch, I'm sure he's going to be here. Uh, hopefully, on, on hopefully Wednesday night or, or Thursday night, depending on when we record. Uh, but that's all, guys. Thanks for listening in, tuning in. I uh, hope uh, we do win the Champions League and then hopefully smiles on our faces when we see next time and the time after. Uh, that's all from us tonight. Thank you, guys.